In this video, we're going to talk about chaining multiple middleware functions in Next.js 13. Now, middlewares are functions that allow you to intercept the request, perform some task before you're sending the response to the user. They're used for things like authentication. In a previous video, we also implemented internationalization using middlewares. But oftentimes, folks would ask me, well, if you're using middlewares for different things, how do we combine these functions together? Do we just write them all in one file? Or is there any way that you can just chain them together so they run one after the other? Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at that. If you're not comfortable with what middlewares are, there is a video about middlewares that you can just uh, watch first to learn what these functions are and how you would use them. And then you can come back here where we would just discuss how you can combine these to run together. Now let's jump into the code and see what we're dealing with here. I've started with a simple middleware function. So if you head to uh, Next.js documentation, uh, if you search for middleware, there's uh, explanations or examples of uh, middleware functions. And uh, for the beginner, what we're doing here, it's just a middleware function that's just logging the request URL and then calling this next function on the next response instance to handle the torch to the next middleware in the stack or send the respond back to the user. Now this next response is an instance or extension of the response object from the web API that gives you some helper functions like this next redirect or rewrite to do or perform some tasks beyond the response object. Also, this next request is an extension of the web API request object. Now, what we're doing here, as I just mentioned, we're just extracting the request URL and logging it into the console and then uh, passing the next to the next middleware. If there's anything, we're sending a response back. Now, this config is just to tell Next.js for what paths inside of our application this middleware or this function should run. Here, we are just uh, using this negative look ahead regular expression to say run this function for everything uh, besides my static folder in underscore next images or favicon. So it runs for all other paths. So as you can see here down in the console, it is logging this uh, middleware one in the URL, it's currently localhost 3000. Now, what if we want to also run another middleware? Let's say this first one was for authentication or for internationalization, and we want to have or perform another task besides this. Well, one thing is to include everything that you need to do in this one middleware function. So everything, include all the logic in one function. Let's say the second middleware wants to just get the path name uh, from your request and there's a next URL object on it. And then maybe the second one just wants to log uh, from the second middleware, let's say, uh, wants to log the path name. So we're going to go ahead and just log the path name, okay? so. This is one option to include all the logic in one function, but this is not maintainable because I'm not doing anything here. It's just logging things. If you're doing authentication or if you're doing internationalization or if you're doing, maybe you're just responding uh, JSON data from your middleware just like an API, or if you're implementing a feature flag inside of your middleware, it can get tedious, it can get long and unmaintainable. Now, one way is to just uh, define another function. Let's say we call this middleware or two, middleware two. It's going to get request, which is an instance of next request. And here we're just going to do this thing. And then we're going to also return from it now let me just rename this to middleware one. Now down here I can export a function called middleware that is going to receive the request. This is the function that actually Next.js is going to call for you. And inside of it, I can just call the middleware one and pass in the request to it. And then I can also call middleware two and pass in the request to it. 
Okay. Now, middleware functions can be async functions if you want to perform any asynchronous task inside of them. So let's just turn them to async functions. You can then down here await these two middlewares, which means that you have to also turn this into an async function. Okay. So let's just review what we had done here. Well, we just defined two functions, middleware one and our second middleware which are performing whatever task that you want them to do. Let's just delete this from here because now we're performing that inside of a second middleware. So I have middleware one, which is logging the URL. The second middleware is logging the path name. Now I have exported a middleware from this file, which is going to be called by Next.js. And inside of it, I'm just calling and awaiting these two middleware functions, which is going to run these functions one after the other. And this is one way of stacking our middlewares on top of each other or running one after the other. So if I refresh my page over here, you can see these two middlewares running. Uh, and for the second middleware, I actually forgot to put the path name at the end. So it's just logging the whole uh, next JS or next URL object. So if I refresh it here, now you can see the first middleware run. This is logging the URL and the second middleware is just running the path name, which is forward slash, which is at our home page. Now, while this works, it's not the pattern that you see out there from libraries and packages that expose their functionality through a middleware. Oftentimes, you would see these higher order functions that take in a middleware and return a middleware and in between perform some sort of task, uh, whether it be authentication or internationalization and whatnot. They would see, you would see this higher order function pattern. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, we can have a with middleware function or with middleware one function here that receives a middleware. This is going to be of type next middleware. And this is going to return an async function. This is going to be our actual middleware called by next.js, which receives the next request object as well as an event, which is of type next fetch event. And what this is going to do is to perform what this first middleware was supposed to do. So just logging the URL in this case, for lack of a better example. And then at the end is going to return actually calling the middleware that you pass to it and also passes the request and event object to the second middleware. Okay, so with this with middleware one function that we now have, if we were to use it instead of this function we have at the end, we could have just export default this with middleware one function and actually pass our second middleware to it. Now, if I refresh the page, we should get the same result of our both middlewares running one after the other. So what's happening here? is that we're passing this second middleware to this with middleware higher order function, which receives this first middleware, performs whatever tasks that we were supposed to do in the first middleware, and then calls that second one, okay? So this is a common pattern that you would see stacking or chaining middlewares together. Now, if you have a third middleware, you can also create a factory function or a middleware function uh, for this second middleware. You can just call it maybe uh, function with middleware two, and then this rec this also receives a middleware of type next middleware, and then what this is going to do is also return an async function. This is going to be the actual middleware that receives request, which is of type next request, and then event, which is of type next fetch event and what this is going to do is to perform whatever that the second middleware was uh, hoping to do which is just logging the path name and then this also returns calling whatever middleware that the developer passes to it also forwarding the request and the event object now you can then use this with middleware to function down here call this and then pass in your third middleware down here if you had another function. So as you can see, if you're chaining or nesting these higher order functions inside one another, which is going to call this middleware functions or chain this middleware functions one after the other or run them one after the other. This approach works, but if you have more than two or three middleware functions, you can see that this can become pretty tedious or 
unmaintainable with these nested functions just calling each other, which is why we're going to actually implement a better way to use a function, a recursive function that calls itself and receives an array of these higher order middleware functions to just call this middlewares and then move on to the next one until we're done with our middleware stack and then returns the next response. Uh, now, before we implement that, I just want to mention that I got this inspiration from this uh, next middleware guide repository made by Jacer. So I'm going to include the link in the description for this repo, which is actually implementing this uh, stack function or chain function that allows you to pass in an array of these higher order functions and then it, it is going to recursively call these functions uh, to run the middleware. So going back to our application, what we're going to do here is to create a folder here. Let's call this middleware's and inside of it, I want to create a chain.ts file. And inside of it, I want to export a function called chain. We'll just close this off so we have more room. So this function, it is going to receive some higher order functions. This is going to be an array of middleware factory functions. So let's just define this type over here. So we have this middleware factory, which is going to receive a middleware, which is of type next middleware. And this is going to also return um, a next middleware. Okay, so the type is a factory function where we just saw this together in the previous file. You receive a middleware just like this with middleware functions we created. It receives a middleware and then it also returns a middleware. So this chain function is going to receive an array of this higher order functions and also an index uh, can default to zero to start. So this is the current higher order function. We're going to start from the first one and we're going to create the current a higher order function by accessing the function at that specific index. And if we do have a current function, what we're going to do is to actually call this chain function again. So this is where the recursion happens. We're going to pass in the functions and this time we're going to set the index to the next one. We're going to get the next higher order function and we're going to call this current with that next uh, higher order function. So it's going to chain or nest them inside one another. And what we're going to do here at the end, uh, if we don't have any current higher order function, it means that we are at the end of our array of functions that was passed to this. We're going to just return a middleware, which is just going to um, use the next response and then call the next method on it. So therefore the last or the innermost middleware is going to be this which is going to be then be wrapped with these higher order functions just like how we did it here. So this last one once we're done with all the middlewares that we have passed is going to be something like this where it's call calling this next response dot next function. So when you're done with the middleware that you're passing or the higher order functions, this is going to be the last one actually nested inside of the other ones. Okay, so let's see what this error is about. Well, if we just define the return type for this to be a next middleware, because this is what this function is all about, it is going to receive an array of higher order functions. These are uh, functions that receive a middleware and return one and at the end it's going to return a middleware but what's happening here is that we are recursively calling this function or calling it it is going to call itself until it chains or stacks all of this middleware to the end and then if there is nothing left uh, inside of our array of middleware factories it's going to return this one okay 
So now that we have this file, let's actually bring in this middleware back to our middleware function. So let's say here I can create a middleware1.ts file where I'm going to just bring in uh, this with middleware first function. So I'm going to get this out of here and to just make it nice, we're going to have them here. Let me just also import these types the next request and also the fetch event okay so let's save this and let's also export this function from this file so we're going to organize all of our files we no longer need this middleware over here and we're going to create another we also don't need this one we're also going to create another file so let's just uh, take this out and inside of here, we're going to create a middleware2.ts. This is representing another middleware that we're going to be running. Let me just import this and I'm going to explain what we're doing over here so you're not confused. Let's just import this stuff. And also we're going to export this function from here. So let me just close everything and save this for now this is going to error out but what we're doing here from a high level is that we created this chain function which is going to receive an array of higher order functions and it's going to chain them all together and it's going to return a middleware or call those middlewares in a stack now instead of having all of our middlewares inside of this middleware.ts file what we want to do inside of this file is to just import everything that we just created on this file. So we're bringing the chain and we're bringing these higher order functions depending on different middlewares that we have. Let's say we have one for authentication, one for internationalization, one for A-B testing and feature flags, one for maybe responding with JSON API. We have different middlewares that we're going to now define them inside of this middleverse folder and these are going to be higher order functions on their own that take in a middleware and return also a middleware and you're going to perform whatever task that you want relevant to this first middleware here so this is where you would do for example the internationalization okay and once you've defined all of these higher order functions inside of the middleware.ts this is the file that actually nextjs cares about this is a folder we created to just organize our middlewares inside of a folder, use a chain function to just wrap them around together or call them recursively. But inside of the middleware.ts, this is the file that Next.js cares about. We are export defaulting that chain function and we are passing in an array of our own middleware functions. So if you want to make this cleaner, maybe you can have middlewares and then pull this out of it. So if you're creating an array of higher order functions, and then we're passing this middleware down to the chain function, which is going to then return a next middleware. And if I refresh the page now, we should see that same action of middleware first, just logging in the URL and the second middleware, uh, logging in the path name. So this is easier, it's a bit cleaner to have different uh, to define different middleware functions in different files so you don't have to define all the logic in just one file it's more maintainable because they're separate in separate files you can just jump into any functionality that you want and then at the end all you do inside your middleware.ts file is just chain them together or stack them on top of each other that's a wrap for this lesson folks we learned how to chain multiple middleware functions in next.js this is going to first allow you to run multiple functions instead of just having to export one middleware from the one file that you have or you can in Next.js. But it also allows you to keep this clean and maintainable because instead of having to include all the logic of all the functions or all the middlewares inside one function, you're now dividing them in between different functions and you're kind of chaining or stacking them on top of each other with this function that we created that goes through this array and calls this middleware functions one after the other. If you have any questions, hit me up. Other than that, I'm signing out. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.